Let us begin to talk about the Greek family tree, starting with the primordial gods. The primordial gods were said have to emerge from chaos. These include Eros, the elder, not to be confused with the younger Eros known as Cupidos or Cupid by the Romans. Tartarus, the original god of the underworld, Gaia, mother, and the most significant of the primordial gods, Erebus, god of darkness, and Nyx, his sister and wife, and the goddess of night. Two unique entities, Kronos, old father time, and Ananke. The goddess of destiny exists beyond space and time. Important to note here, the Nisqronos, which is spelled with a C and not C H, is distinct from the Titan Kronos, whom we will talk about later. The family tree really originates with Gaia. From her came three significant deities: Urea, the mountains; Uranus, the sky; and Pontos, the sea. Gaia and Uranus became a couple, and their union produced the Cyclops, the Hecatonic Hades, monsters with fifty heads and a hundred arms. And most notably, the twelve titans. But before talking about the titans, let us explore the other offspring of the primordial gods first. From Tartarus, the god of the underworld, came several monsters, like Herbaros, the three-headed dog guarding the underworld's gates, the dragon. The Jason and the Argonauts face, and the Sphinx, with a human face and the body of a lion and bird wings. Other notable creatures emerge from Pontos, the original sea god, such as the Harpies, Sirens, and Gorgons. With Medusa being the most famous Gorgon. Known for her snake-covered hair, it could turn onlookers to stone. The descendants of Pontus also include the Crae, three grey witches who shared one eye and one tooth, and could foresee the future. Nereus, known as the Old Man of the Sea, is another. Important sea deity and father of the Nereids, a crew of sea nymphs. And lastly, from Erebus and Nyx came Charon, the ferryman of the underworld, along with personifications of various concepts like death and sleep. Now on to the Titans. The second generation, the Titans, children of Gaia and Uranus, include twelve key figures, starting with Okeanos and Hades, gods of the ocean and rivers, replaced Pontos in this generation. They were the parents of the Okeanids, the sea goddess. Who were mothers to many important deities, Hyperion, the god of lights, and Theia, the goddess of the ether, were parents to Helios, the original sun god, and Selene, the original moon goddess, whose Roman names inspired our terms solar and lunar. Next, we have Creos. Who married a daughter of Pontos, their child Pallas, the original god of war, 
married Stooks, and they were the parents of Kratos and Nike. Important to note here, Kratos, in the Greek mythology, has nothing to do with Kratos, who is known from the God of War video game series. And the name Nike is famous for its shoe brands. Then there is Kronos, a god of harvest, and Rhea, goddess of fertility. They are central figures, as the king and the queen of the gods in this generation. The other titans include Themis, goddess of law and order, Iapetos, god of mortal life, Mnemosyne. The goddess of memory, Coeus, the celestial axis, and Phoebe, a minor moon goddess. Among them, Iapetos is significant as the father of Atlas, Prometheus, and Epimetheus. Prometheus is famed for creating mankind while Epimetheus is known for marrying Pandora, the first woman. Gronos and Aria are sensual, because according to mythology, Gronos overthrew his father Uranos, leading to a prophecy that one of Gronos' own children would overthrow him. To prevent this, Kronos swallowed each of his children at birth, but Rhea tricked him, and Zeus was born, saving him by substituting a rock. Zeus grew up to challenge and defeat Kronos, freeing his siblings and becoming the new king of the gods. Now, on to the next generation, the third generation. The Olympians, starting with the six children of Cronos and Rhea, which would be Poseidon, god of the sea, Demeter, goddess of the harvest, Zeus, king of the gods and god of the sky, Hera, queen of the gods and the goddess of women, Hades, god of the underworld, and Hestia. Goddess of the Earth. Although Hades is not typically counted among the twelve Olympians, the children of Zeus round out this group to a total of twelve. Notably, Hephaestus also is rarely considered one of the twelve main Olympians, as he and Hades are mostly absent. Hades in the underworld and Hephaestus in his volcano. Now on to Zeus' children. Those include Athena, goddess of wisdom, born from his first wife, Metis, Hephaestus, god of fire, and Hades, god of war, born to Hera, Aphrodite, God is on love and beauty, whose origins vary in myths. Some say she was already born when Cronus's best part got cut off, and with the blood that mixed in the sea, out of foam, Aphrodite emerged. In other stories, it is said that Aphrodite is the daughter of Zeus. Depending on the myth, Aphrodite is way stronger than Zeus, or weaker. Hermes, messenger of the gods and son of Maia, and the twins Apollo, god of the sun, and Artemis, the gods of the moon and hunting, born to Leto. Beyond these twelve. Zeus fathered many other notable deities and demigods. Persephone, 
thought of Zeus and Demeter, who became queen of the underworld after being abducted by others. Dika, the goddess of justice, and the Moses, the goddesses of inspiration, the arts, were also among his offspring. Additionally, Zeus fathered heroes like Perseus and Heracles, and the god Dionysus, god of wine, who sometimes replaces Hestia among the Olympians. And more notable figures include Eros, also known as Cupidus or Cupids, a god of love, Hermaphroditus, a being with both male and female attributes, who once solved the disputes between Hera and Zeus, as he was the only one able to take part in both genders. Born of Hermes and Aphrodite, and Pan, the rusty god, often associated with shepherds and flocks. And this concludes today's overview. Of course, there are many, many more, but I hope that I could give at least a rough approximation of important figures in the Greek mythology. And as we are going on, we will explore all their stories, all their relations, and all what is to be known about them.